Here we go. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to be talking about the faith or the flesh versus the spirit. The flesh versus the spirit. And we're going to go through some scriptures because Jesus talked a lot about it. But Paul also, through the power of Jesus, talks about it. 516. And this I say then, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. And there's many different levels of that. And sometimes we see that and we'll, well, I'm going to walk in the spirit and that way I won't be killing people today. Well, yeah, it can be that, but it also could be this, that you're going to really hear what the Spirit of God wants you to do. Because the Spirit of God says, don't forsake assembling together. But God says, that is really true, but I want you to go over there. Out of all the churches that you go to, I want you to go to that one. You can't get that from the Bible. All you can get from the Bible is that I should go. But where do I go, Lord? You know? And so God has taught us that, has led us through a lot of trials and errors. We have finally made it home in that area where we need to be. Amen? So we know that sometimes you just don't know, but it's got to be from the Spirit of God. No, you go into some churches and, man, it's so big. And there's so much glitter and the, the, and the music is so grand and everything about it. And a lot of people that are in the flesh, because it's big, because the music is there, they miss the Spirit of God. They miss the Spirit of God because wildness has them. The worldliness has them because they are all about Bigger is better, and bigger isn't always better. More money isn't always better. More money can get you in a heap of trouble. Amen? Amen. Right? So it's by the Spirit that we live and have our being. But we all miss it. But we all shouldn't be missing it all the time, because then if we are, we're in the flesh all the time. Well, I'm praying, Pastor. Yeah, but when you pray, get rid of that sheet of prayer you got. Just give it a toss. It says a lot of good things, but pray from your heart. You got to pray from the Spirit. Well, what are you talking about? The priest gave me that prayer to, to read, to say, or the pastor did. And so you got to get, you got to go on beyond that man. You got to start praying by the Spirit. A lot of people just look at you. And then a lot of Christian people, they say, well, I understand what you mean because that's how we grew up. That's how we grew up. They had to get by the Spirit. We knew when it was just us saying it, and then we knew when the Spirit of God took us. We knew it was God. And then we had discernment of spirit so strong in it that I knew when, when, the, when it was the devil that was taking me in the spirit, in the wrong spirit. I knew it, was, it wasn't God. I could tell. Well, how could you tell? Because I could tell the difference between the dark and the light. And they're both saying prayers to Jesus. But one wanted to get me off because he was a great spirit of deception. He wanted me pr praying out a religious spirit. Wow, well, am I going to know? You didn't spend time with Jesus. And you know the difference between the counterfeit and the real. You listen to the real and say, that is the spirit of God. And then you listen to something that sounds real good and you go, that was from the throne of darkness because the Holy Ghost wasn't in it. Well, it was the Word of God, yeah, but the, without the Spirit, there is no depth. There is no life without the Spirit of God. So I can't go back there anymore. You see what I mean? We all know that because we've been schooled in some manner in that, but how important it is that you 
move and have your being in the Spirit of God. So I say, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You won't be praying out of a wrong spirit. Amen. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. The flesh wants certain things to be praying. So, oh, I felt that, brother, and it wasn't the Spirit of God at all. And the spirit against the flesh. See, the two don't work together. You're going to decide one day either I'm going to stay in the Holy Ghost or I'm just going to go on the other. And whatever the other is, you'll deceive yourself and say, but the other is, it's the spirit too. And it's like Jesus says, you got off track years ago and you never got on track. Really? Yeah. A lot of preachers are going to get to heaven one day because they got off track and God says, you haven't preached a sermon of mine for years even though you preached every day. You were an evangelist and you went here and there, but you got off. And the only people that loved you was those that were in the flesh because those that are in the flesh hear their own you thought you were of God because your offerings were great and your crowds were great. But I tell you, they weren't my people. They were drawn by darkness. You see the difference? The preacher be de beside himself. He goes, really? And no doubt he'd hang his head in heaven and cry. Because he missed it so bad, but he didn't see it. And Jesus says on this one, I forgive you. I believe this, that there'll be preachers in hell burning because they missed it, because God says, I showed you several times. I showed you, and you wouldn't listen to me, and I gave you space to repent, but you love the money. You love the offerings. You love the people saying, oh, you're the greatest. And you loved all those gifts that came through the mail. But you got where you didn't love me. Oh, you said you did, and you gave me the credit for all. But I wasn't in that package that came in that mailbox. And you should have known it. And when they were lifting you up and praising and clapping their hands for you when you walked on stage, you should have rebuked them and I told you that. But you wouldn't do that. You gave in to the loss of the flesh instead of my spirit and you didn't coach them in the way that they needed to be coached. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law of bondage no more but you're under my spirit. So, verse 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. What is that liberty? That you know the spirit of God. That you would learn the spirit of God. That you would refresh the spirit of God inside of you. Some knew the spirit of God. They just need to refresh the spirit of God. Strengthen the things that remain. Well, what remains, God? Knowing my spirit, get back in it. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage, of fleshliness. That covers a broad area in your life. We could teach every sermon between now and Christ come home till he comes back to get his own. This sermon, going through all the different aspects of your life. Hey, stay in the spirit of God. Hey, you got a religious spirit on you. You need to do your hair. Put some rollers in it. And not you, but your wife. <laughs> yeah. You've been thinking about cornrows. All right. I want to go into Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. It says this, 
Through your own fault, you will lose. Through your own fault, you will lose. The inheritance I gave you, I will enslave you to your enemies. You have one enemy, and that's the devil. In a land that you do not know, for you have kindled my anger, and it will burn. Now, what's that next word? I can hardly make myself say it, right? Ever, forever. Lord, you're never going to get over this. God says, you know, you and I have been together a long, long time. You know, when God starts talking like that, And I'll tell you what, the blessing that I had for you. You know, and this is what you don't want to hear. The blessing I had for you, I am taking it away. You'll never, you'll never get that again. You're never going to get that again. This thing's out of your life. And when you think upon that thing that I took away from you, I want you to always remember, I am God. And I'm the one that gave it to you. And I'm the one that took it away from you. And I want you to remember me. So now get back in the vineyard and start serving me by the Spirit of God. Or I'll take something else away from you. And I'll keep grinding on you until you don't have anything else left. Now think about this. God says, I want you to learn here. Walk in the Spirit. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, in flesh, who depends on flesh for his strength. We trust in God. We support those that we feel that God has put over us. who depends on the flesh for his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wasteland. He will not see, I want you to see this, he will not see, pro, he will not see prosperity when it comes and it stares him in the face for I'll take it away from him. He won't be able to discern that. You ever wonder how some people can see something and go, that was right before us and that person took it and ran with it and it's totally blessed. And here I struggle with finances and this and that. And I could have done the same thing. God says, it stared you in the face and I didn't let you say it. Because you trusted in your flesh and you trust in your flesh. And I will have no honor in that. I want honor in your heart for me. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where there is no life. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. When he comes, it does not fear when, well, we got a big bill. Well, then pay it. We got a this, we got that, we got the Lord. It'll be okay. God has never failed us yet. See, when the heat comes and all the other trees wither, this tree says, I'm tapped in to where the water is. Where its leaves are always green, it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The Lord searched the heart and examined the mind to inward a man's according to his conduct according to what his deeds deserve. See, God's in total control. 
Who could understand the heart? Who can see it? Only God can. Has God ever opened up anything to you and said, I never saw that before. I never saw that problem before. And the problem was in me, and I never saw that side of me before. Who do you think's revealing that to you? Satan? No, he's got, he wants you to stay in bondage. But God opened up that to you. Are we so naive as to think there's only one thing that was wrong with me? Now I'm perfect. Really? <laughs> oh, well. And that's how we go. We, we, we have God show us one thing and we think, well, I guess that's it. All right, now let's go on over to Romans 8. Now, because it's talking about the flesh and it's talking about the spirit, so let's rip through this a little bit. There, there, there is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. You're not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. No condemnation if you stay in the spirit. For the law of the spirit in Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. Because there is no life, even though it looks like life, there is no life in the flesh when it comes out of the flesh. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his only son in likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh. In other words, Jesus was always in the spirit. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I want you to see that the, the law was good, but it wasn't done by the spirit. It wasn't done, done, done. It wasn't done by the strength of the Holy Ghost. It was done by, well, this is what we need to do. We need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. And Jesus says, now we're going to do all those things, but we're going to do the heart of the law by the Spirit. Because I really don't, really, I don't believe that they could love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, and strength without the Holy Ghost. You can't do it. For they that are after the flesh do not mind the things of the flesh. That's why people go to certain churches. They go, that pastor, there's no anointing on him. And he says, well, but this church has so many people. That's how, that's how many are in the flesh. Because if you're in the spirit, you can't stand it. You can't stand it anymore. You go, well, we're not going there. But they that are after the spirit... But they that are after, the, are you after the spirit? Oh, pastor, you know. All right. They that are after spirit, the things of the spirit. What are the things of the spirit? You're looking for that prayer to be prayed that's prayed by the Holy Ghost. You're looking that, for that peace that doesn't come through fleshly things, but from the spirit of God, from the throne of God itself. That's what you're looking for. You're finally looking for you to get in the spirit where you operate totally by the Holy Ghost. Will you be able to do it 100%? And I have to tell you today, I doubt it because there was only one that could do it 100%, and that was Jesus. But you're going to do it enough that you're going to excel, and God's going to be very pleased with you. To be carnally minded in death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. You ever see people that are so-called Christians? They never have life, the life abundantly, and they never have the peace that they should have. They know they want the peace. They hear the preacher speak about the peace, and they, they like what it says, but they don't operate in the peace. Why? Because they're not in the spirit. There's a price to pray. There's a, a price in the spirit realm that must be paid. And you'll be in the Spirit. And you'll have life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God. Where it is not subject to the things of God, neither can it be. So then that they that are in the flesh, they can't even please the Lord. 
but you're not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. And if so, that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of God, okay, he's not a Christian. But if Christ, but, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of right. What, he, what he's really saying here is he's saying, you're not, you're, the time of your resurrection hasn't happened yet. Your body is going to get old and die, but not your spirit, for you are born again, and you're never going to die. But if the spirit of him, verse 11, that raised up Christ from the dead dwells you in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead also shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, be not debtors to the flesh. You don't owe the flesh anything but live after that to live after the flesh. But if you live after the, the flesh, you will die. But if you through the spirit, this is where I'm going, the spirit, you do mortify the deeds of the body and ye shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For here it's verse 16. But the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. That's how you know. The Spirit itself bears witness with your spirit. You are a child of God. Now some people never get past that. But I want to take you past that. I want you to start operating in the Spirit of God. Not just know, well, I'm a child of God. I know that in my heart. God says, yeah, but I want you to start operating on Monday through Sunday in the Spirit of God. Well, I know I'm a child of God. Jesus says, can we go on? Jesus said, do you hear him? To all the angels. Yeah, we hear him. We we're actually praying for him. I don't know if angels can pray for you, but I would thank God if they would. How about you? All right. You can get the job done in two ways. Of course, Mary saw an angel, angel talked to her, and she magnified God, and she said, so be it. Zacharias saw an angel, and he questioned the angel. Who was in the spirit, like they should have been? Judas wanted Jesus to confront the Pharisees, and everybody would see that he's the Christ. Along the way, he sinned like us, Along our, our walk with the Lord, we, we fall and make mistakes. Judas took some money. He was going to make some money along the way. But he should have never got involved in this one. Amen? Amen? Things didn't work out any good at all. Jesus is going to get, confront the Pharisees, but not yet. Judas, you should have known that by the Spirit of God, but he didn't. Some Christians study and judge things off their knowledge rather than having the Spirit to divide, rightly divide the truth that they have learned. Why don't you, I wrote this down. Some Christians study and judge things off the knowledge rather than judge things by the Spirit to be able to rightly divide the truth. Because some things, I know what it says, but in this instance, you better be in the Spirit of God. You're going to judge it wrong. In this, only by the Spirit are you going to know. Well, this person's so coarse. The Bible says have nothing to do with them. But God says, I want you to be a friend to them. For the Spirit of God wants to save them out of the depths of darkness. Is that always true? No, it's not. 
Sometimes God says, I gave you my word, and you should have knew the spirit, though, that was in the word. You should have known it. Now, I wasn't leading you to them. They're going to drag you down. You should have known by the spirit I was leading you to them. See how important that is? For I was going to save them. Well, how do we know? Get in the spirit. 1 John 2.27, but the anointing which ye have received of him, the empowerment that you received of him, abideth in you, and you have no need that any man teach you. Doesn't say that we don't need teachers. Just says the Spirit of God is going to take over. And you're going to know who needs to teach you. You're going to know the Spirit of God. Are you hearing me? Well, this is something that uh, a pastor couldn't really teach to somebody that's just born again. But you never know. They might see it and run with it. But it's something that you and I should know. Amen? We've been in church a long time. All right, now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I want you to see this real quick. God wants to manifest his spirit so you would know. So he's given 12, let's just do 12, 7. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, the manifestation of the Holy Ghost is not held from you so you can't walk in the spirit. For he says, for one is given the word of wisdom and the other the word of knowledge. The Holy Ghost gives you wisdom and knowledge. He gives you a word for the moment. And he says, yes, it's me. No, it's not me. And the other one is, how do I know? Well, how do I know whether it's of God or it isn't of God? How do I know this? God says, I told you I give discerning of spirits. That religious spirit is talking through you, man. It isn't me. Or the Spirit of God is talking through you. You know because you know the discernment. Not only you have discernment of spirits, but you're able to nail what demon it is. That's actually what this is. It's a small s in there. But that you know the discernment. That's, that's a spirit. Who's showing you that? It says the Holy Spirit gives you that gift. Now, go on down here to verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 this is, this is the clincher here everybody not all of us are going to walk in the spirit all the time we don't we miss it but every man's work shall be made manifest that's chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians verse 13 for that day shall Declare it. What that day, what's that day? The judgment seat of Christ. Because it shall be revealed by fire. God's a consuming fire. And the fire shall try every man's works of what sort it is. If any man's works abide. What works abide? Well, if any man builds upon this foundation. Gold, silver, precious stones. Now we know that wood burns, right? Hay burns. Stubble burns. He said everybody's going to have some of that. But he says, be led by the Spirit of God. And it's, it's not wood and hay. It's something really good. It's gold and silver. Your works are worth that. They're precious. Every man sh if any man's works abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Okay? I want you to know that not all, everything you do, but a lot that you do, the best you can do is be in the spirit. Now, how many know that Jesus, he's, uh, he's already up there with the crown on his head, amen? Everything he did was in the spirit of God. He was our ruler of thumb. It's like, well, I can't maybe measure, I know I can't measure up to him, but I have Christ in me and I can do it. That's why... 
in John 4.24. You, you got to get it. You, 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 you got to get it. 424, God is spirit, capital S, and they that worship him must worship him in their spirit and in truth. It's good that you got the truth here today and you live here and you have this truth that I'm talking about, but you got to put this truth in the spirit now. You got to walk in the spirit. You already know truth. But we got to be in the spirit Mabel, I know. Now you got to walk in it. Because you got all the scriptures. That's truth. In Matthew 7 21. I want you to see oh, 721 okay that's why Jesus says this uh, I'm going to tell you something about these people they thought they were born again and they thought they were doing things that they needed to do and the devil was assisting them. What's kind of sad about the church today, if anybody prays on anybody, and this was really like this years ago, really, really bad. If any minister prayed on somebody and they saw the power up there, they all flocked to the front to take it. Take it! It's like, really? Is that guy of God? I don't know, he's got power. It's like, you're going you're gonna to partake of that and you don't know? Everybody else going up? Yeah, I know. Everybody else goes up. And we did. And I'll tell you what. Some of those, that power came on you and put you down on your back wasn't God. Some was. A lot of it. A lot of it was not. All right. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What did he say? You gotta, you gotta get in the spirit, man. You know, us, us, uh, our band members, they, if they weren't in the spirit, you'd feel hell when they played. Now, how deep they, we get in the spirit, how deep we can, you can play your instruments, how, how much motivated by the Holy Ghost is, is the measure and rod of how much is gonna go on out to the people. People talk about, well, I can sing, I can just play Mick Jagger's tune, and I can put different words to it, Jesus. You are a fool if you believe that. He made that music by the hand of darkness. Him and Keith Richards, you telling me you're going to have any kind of twang that imitates that won't work. And not every one of me that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father. Many will come and say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Notice they prophesied in thy name, cast out devils. You know, God talks about if a prophet comes to you and prophesies and it comes to pass, but the, the end result is it leads you away from me. He says, have nothing to do with that prophet, even if it comes to pass. And where, where our measure and stick is with the church, will it come to pass. Many will say to me in that day, and in thy name cast out many devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. That means just wonderful works. What if it's miracles or whatever it is? Then I will profess unto you. I didn't even know you, man. You were never born again. I would listen to a pastor uh, a few years ago. He was in a church pastor, and he was never born again. And all at once, through a series of things and circumstances, he yielded to God. He thought he already did. He never had. Became a pastor. Pastoring people never was born again. And he got born again. I want to tell you what his message was on. Don't be deceived.
That's to that was total deception, what I, I just gave you. Now here is partly deceived. In Matthew 13, don't worry, I'm not going to go on very much longer. 13.24 Another parable put he forth, Jesus saying, that the kingdom of heaven is like unto the man that sows good seed into his field. And while men slept, while you weren't aware, while you weren't really pushed in to go into the spirit, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way and said, they'll grow together. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. It's like, whoa, how is it that we got, we got people in our church that they're not even born again? How is it that churches get people and one says, I believe in abortion. Woman, that's right. Say, are you a Christian and really saying what I hear you saying? Yeah, but you've been here all these years, and I, well, I th got thinking about it. I, I guess you did get thinking about it. It's obvious right at the crucial time when they got this law, this thing is that you're saying on the wrong side. How is it you've been singing Amazing Grace right beside me all these years, and I'm looking at you? All right. So the servant of the household came and said, Sir, did not thou you sow good seed in the field? From whence are these tares? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then we go and expose them all, gather them up? And this is what Jesus said. But he said, Don't, because they have so many of them deceived. If my flock was in the spirit, they wouldn't be deceived, but they are deceived, thinking that old Ruth is a person of God. Old Jesse is a man of God. Ruth and Jesse together. And the thing is, they're not. But every, they got to believe in that there's something that are very spiritual. The little ones, they can't discern their right from their left. So what, what will happen? He says, leave them. I want you to see this is an illustration of partly deceived. He says, nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you will root up the wheat with them because the wheat has, they're deceived. They're thinking, well, if he's going, I'm going. If you're kicking him out, then I'm leaving too and say, no, it's good that we kick him out. Well, I'm going to stay where I'm going to go. Like that, and that, that's where a lot of the church is at. That's how deep they go. Not very deep at all. But for you guys, I got better things in mind for you. Could be, says the Lord. Let both grow together till the harvest time. In the time of harvest, I will say unto the reapers, you go get those tares first. You know who gets the first rapture? I'll give you the clue. The tares. Oh, I thought we were going. Well, according to this, the tares get their first rapture. I had the guy say to me years ago, and I'm thinking, I even had the bumper sticker on my, on my vehicle. Beware rapture could happen any time. And he said, hey, and he said, they want, they want me to give you a heads up? I go, yeah, go ahead. He goes, <laughs> the terrorists get raptured first. <laughs> oh, don't be one, though. <laughs> uh, uh, you, know, you believe what you want to believe, but I'm just telling you, I thought that was a good place to tell you. And bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather ye the wheat into my barn. There's no difference in days right there. I'm going to just tell you this one. 
I got a couple more scriptures, but I can't go there. It's just taking too long. In Ezekiel, God says, I'm going to send you to Israel. See, he wanted Israel to be judged because their heart was very hard. Sometimes God's, God will send a man if church just doesn't want to be right. He says, I'll send you somebody. I'll send you somebody. You want to be bad? I'll let him preach to you how to be bad. But God says to Ezekiel, he says, I want you to go to Israel and I want you to tell them what they need to know. But he says, they won't listen to you because they got a hard heart and a hard head. But he says, you know what, Ezekiel? I'm going to give you a head of stone. He says, you're going to keep telling them. And you're not going to stop. And you're just going to let your, my words beat into them. But he says, They'll, it'll never penetrate. Now he said, I want to tell you this. So you understand something. If I was to send you somewhere where they had a hard time understanding you, and they didn't understand your language very good, but just because you didn't come from them, they'd believe you. They'd believe you. But I'm going to send you to your own people. And Ezekiel's like, oh, here you made me a preacher. Here you made me an evangelist. And they are so hard-hearted and so full of pride, they'll never receive one of their own. They'll never receive it. God says, I want to judge them. And they'll not be able to say, well, you didn't tell us. Go, yeah, I did. Well, if you would have sent somebody from France, we believe them. Right? God has a way of doing things. You're never going to be able to tell me I didn't tell you. But I, I brought someone in to tell you from your own family. Who, Joey thinks he's a prophet. You mean little Joey we grew up with, played ball with? Yeah. Why, he's out of his mind. It's out of his mind. It's true, isn't it? Well, Joey ain't anything. You ain't anything, Joey. You're my brother. Get out of here. So Joey goes out and he gets a whole city saved or the, another country saved. <coughs> oh, how's that happening? I don't know. He's just out there blowing a lot of wind. That's Joey. That's our little brother. What could he know? You know, sir, if you could get your pride away from you, Joey's from God. And he, he's chosen of God and you can't see it. Your pride blinds your eyes and you are deceived. He has a good word, but you won't hear him because he's Joey, your little brother. You got to watch out for deception, amen? Well, that's Pastor Jim. I've known him every, oh, ever since he was little. Well, I pray that our eyes be opened up. Jesus said the same thing. He says, you know, he says, um, God sent me to where I grew up. And he said, they didn't receive me. And there wasn't many healings. And then he made this statement. He says, a prophet is never accepted in his own country, in his own house. Never accepted. Why? Where do, where's the stronghold there? I'm going to tell you where the strongholds is. It's in pride. It's in pride. The family pride. Family pride. You can't be anything. Instead of a dad or the children say dad is called of God. He was in the taverns, but he isn't anymore. You better listen to him. Amen? Amen. 